Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will be learning about a famous experiment that is Rutherford's gold foil experiment. This experiment was performed by a Nobel laureate whose name was Ernest Rutherford with his co-workers. Rutherford was known as the father of nuclear physics and also he is well known for his work in the field of radioactivity as well as the discovery of the atomic nucleus which was the result of the gold foil experiment. So let us see what this gold foil experiment is all about. The aim of this experiment was to answer a question that is how these subatomic particles like electrons and protons are arranged inside an atom. For this experiment he took a few things. The first thing was a thin gold foil. Now he chose gold because gold happens to be a highly malleable metal which can be beaten into very thin sheets and he wanted his foil to be very thin. The one that he chose was around 1000 atoms thick. Now the second thing that he chose was a source of alpha particles. In that there was a radioactive element radium which emits continuously the alpha particles. Now what are these alpha particles? Alpha particles are basically doubly positively charged helium ions. Now a helium atom is electrically neutral since it has two electrons and two protons. Now by some means if we take out two electrons from it what we are left with is called an alpha particle which has two positive charges. So alpha particle as a whole is doubly positively charged. Now the third thing that he took was a detector which he used to detect the alpha particles which strike on it. Now the setup of the experiment looked something like this. It had a gold foil which was surrounded by the detector which faces the alpha particle emitter. Now what basically happens in this experiment is the fast moving alpha particles from the emitter were shot onto the gold foil and when these alpha particles emerge out of the gold foil they were detected by the detector. Now the atomic model that was accepted at that time was that of Thomson. That is Thomson's atomic model which was also known as the plum pudding model. It had a positively charged sphere and the negatively charged electrons were simply studded onto it. So Rutherford was expecting that all of the alpha particles that move towards the foil will be deflected by their paths. Why did he expect that? Because this is a positively charged sphere and the alpha particles are also positively charged. And we know that two positive charges would repel each other, which would result in the deflection of the path of alpha particles. Now the observation, that is the actual observation after the experiment was totally different as compared to the one that he expected. The actual observation was that almost all the alpha particles passed right through the foil without any deflection. There was a part of alpha particles which deflected at some certain angles but very small. Now there was a very small group of alpha particles which seemed to retrace their path. It was around one particle out of 12,000 alpha particles which seemed to show this behavior. Now these were the three observations that he made and based on these three observations he made a few inferences. Let's look at them. Look at them. So the first observation that was that almost all the alpha particles passed right through the foil without any deflection. And from this he inferred that most of the space inside an atom is empty. And the second observation that he made was that a few of alpha particles got deflected from their paths at certain angles. And from this he inferred that the positive charge that an atom has is fixed to a very small volume inside an atom. It doesn't occupy the full space of the atom like that of the Thomson's model but it occupies a very small space. Then the third observation that he made was there was a, there were very few particles which seemed to retrace their path and from this he inferred that all the positive charge and mass of an atom has concentrated into a very small volume inside the atom. So these were the three inferences that he made and based on this he put forward something which is called a nuclear model of an atom. And this nuclear model basically gave the conclusions that 
he derived from his experiment. So the first postulate of this model is that there is a positively charged sphere at the center of an atom which he named as the nucleus and nearly all the positive charge and mass of the atom is concentrated into that point. And the second thing that he said was that the electrons simply revolve around the nucleus at certain orbits which are circular orbits. Now the third thing that he said was that the size of the nucleus is very very small as compared to the size of the atom. Uh, he also measured the radius of a nucleus and compared, compared it with the radius of the atom. And he found that the radius of the nucleus was around 10 power 5 times smaller than the radius of an atom. So these were the postulates of the nuclear model that Rutherford has given. But this model had an important drawback. Let us see what is that. We know that whenever a body undergoes a circular motion, it always accelerates. And an acceleration is always accompanied with an energy loss. Similarly, in this case, electron is continuously moving around the nucleus in a circular orbit. It means that it also accelerates and hence it continuously radiates energy. And this leads to the shortening of the orbit. So the electron continuously loses energy and its orbit becomes smaller and smaller and it eventually falls onto the nucleus like this. Which states that an atom is not stable, it's highly unstable. But we all know that it is quite stable, otherwise you and me would have not existed. So this is an important drawback of the Rutherford's atomic model because of which it was not accepted. So in this video we learned that the positively charged center of an atom is called the nucleus and the electrons are simply revolving around the nucleus in circular orbits. The size of the nucleus is very very small as compared to the size of the atom. And this model was not able to explain the stability of the nucleus. So I hope you all had fun learning this lesson. Thank you.